In this video, I'm going to go over data type field types. This is one of the ways that Excel is different than Bubble. In Excel, for example, in this example, we have a list of applicants for a very prestigious music internship at a very prestigious company, and we want to keep track of all the applicants applying. In Excel or Google Sheets, everything here is text, right? The age is the same as the name and the location is the same as this field, this column. And the photo, we can't really upload a photo or a application document. And when we insert a date, it's also just all text. Now in Bubble, we have to differentiate between all these different column types. And I'll go over what that means. Each different column type would be a field type in Bubble. So a field type is just what separates the type of data that is in the columns in Bubble. So right here, this would be a text. This would be a number. This is a address. This is a yes, no. This would be a file or an image. This would be a file, and this would be a date. These are all different field types according to Bubble. So let's see how we recreate this and how we choose the types for our database. So let's recreate this table in Bubble and see how that looks. OK, so let's start by creating a table. Since we're in video two, I'm just going to prefix a two to there and say, applicants, our applicants to the prestigious music internship. And over here, first, let's add the name of the applicant. And if we go back to Excel, we can see that the name is a text, right? It's just a name. So if we go here, we see field type. And over here, we can choose text. And now let's go to the next column is age. And we can see that that is a number. So over here, we can put here age and number right over here instead of text number we have all these options and i'm just going to go over the main options and then the next one we have is location location and over here we have geographic address right we want to know exactly where they are and let's do a few more so over here we have application paid and this is just a yes no did they pay for the application because it costs 20 dollars to just send in the application um, so when we do application paid question mark and over here we have yes no cool all right so we have all the options here and they're all different types and then we have profile photo And over here we have image, right? A profile photo will be an image. And let's go through this quickly. Uploaded application document. And this is going to be a file. Now, technically there's no difference between a file and an image, but in Bubbles case, an image is a file. And for Bubbles scenario, they have just a separation of types where it, there's images and then there's all other files. And this will probably be a Word file, right? Docx that you upload an application and date submitted. And so let's do date submitted. And we have here a date field. Cool, awesome. And we can see that we have all the columns here or the fields and we have the different types. Now, what makes these types different? Like in Excel or Google Sheet, you can enter whatever data. If I wanted to enter for Jack Johnson instead of their age and I accidentally put in, I don't know, I don't know, I put in bubble, nothing would happen. Excel is not gonna throw an error. In bubble, if you put text in a number field, it's gonna start throwing an error. You can't do it. It only accepts the specific type of data that it's expecting. For age, it's expecting a number. For location, it's expecting a specific address. For application paid, it's expecting a yes, no. For profile photo, it's expecting an image file. For upload for a document, for this column, it's expecting a document. For date, it only will accept the date. You can't just put in whatever you want. 
because Bubble won't accept that, which also A, is limiting, but B, also helps you keep your database organized, right? You only want yes, no for application paid. You don't want an image there or anything else. And you can see that over here, there's a default column where you can add in the default when you create a record. This is not important. I won't go over this in detail, but you can see that over here, there's an option for yes, no. And for the image, there's an option to upload a file or image. So in summary, a field on a data type is just a limiting parameter to the type of data that can go in a column in Bubble. So over here, we have the applicants in the age column. They can only accept a number. You know, it's putting a parameter and saying you can only add numbers to age. You can only add yes, no to application paid, and you only can only add date submitted a date to date submitted. And if you go over here to the field type, let's just look at an example. We have text, number, numeric range. I won't go over that. Date, right? Date range, date interval. I won't go over that right now. The main ones are yes, no, file, image, geographical address. And we'll go over the other data type, the other types, field types, not data types, field types in later videos. But Right now, we just have all the main ones over here. Okay, let's go through two more examples of this. So I wanna keep track of my medicines in my cabinet and I could use Excel or I can create an app and use Bubble. So let's take this Excel sheet that someone else made and turn move it into our Bubble database. Okay, so we have name, number of pills, expiry date. So let's add in here a table. Let's call it medicines. Since we're in a bubble, we should probably just call it medicine and then it will pluralize it for us. Okay, now we're gonna add a field and the field is going to be name and the field type, the field type we're going to is text, right? A name is a text. The only limiting parameter is it shouldn't be a number, right? A name is never a number, it's just text. All right. The next one we have is number of pills. Okay, so number of pills. And this, the field type is going to be a number. We're only accepting numbers for number of pills, obviously. And then the next one is expiry date. So expiry date is going to be, you guessed it, a date. It's in the name, right? It's not a date range, it's just one specific date. We only want to accept dates for that. And the price is going to be a number, right? So percentages, things like that, all go into a number category too. So if you want to make this into dollars, you save it as a number, you display it to the user with a dollar sign. And then prescription document, that's going to be a file, right? We need to get something from the computer, a PDF or something and it's gonna be a file and you can search for it or you can scroll down to the middle here and choose file. Okay, let's go to our app data and try to add a record manually. And over here, we can see the table medicines and let's try to add one of our medicines to our database here. So if I click new entry, I can put in number of pills. If I try to put in a number, I'm trying to type ABC, it's not letting me. It literally only lets me put in number. So I can put in four bills. Expiry date, it's giving you a structure here. So let's say I want to say 10, 28, 20, 23. Hour is going to be 12, 30 p.m. Okay, now it gives you a structure. You can't save anything else here. And then for price, same thing. I can't type letters. I'm trying to type letters and I can't. And then name, you can type whatever you want because it is just text. So let's call this Advil. Uh, uh, on me. Advil. Okay, cool. And then for prescription document, it literally only lets me upload a document. So I can upload a document to that. Let's call this whatever this is. It's a file. Cool. It's a picture, but it's just a document. I can upload a PDF or whatever I want and click create. 
And now we have that record with the correct structure, right? The expiry date is a date and the document is saving the file path to AWS. Amazon is storing the document and giving us, here's the document and you can store it in your database. And this is the link to the document I just uploaded and then the price in name and the price is obviously a number, but you can see that also created date, which is a default field that bubble adds is also in date format. Obviously you want it in this format. Cool. All right, let's go over the last example and I'll let you try and add it in, in bubble. Let's say you're a brewery offering or a bar offering beers and you want to save your menu items, not in an Excel sheet, but in a nice fancy website on bubble, but you have a list on an Excel sheet. Let's see how you would translate this table into bubble with the correct field types, with the correct field types, right? That we just went over. So pause here and try to add this table to bubble. Okay, so hopefully you succeeded there. All right, let's do it together. So right now we're gonna add in our beers. Let's call them beers, not drinks. So let's go back to our data types, add a new data type, which means adding a new table and let's call this beers and let's append it to right because this is our second video and we're adding a table beers let's just call it beer get at it here too and it'll pluralize it for us in bubble when we list it and let's look at the first thing we want to add so first is name we've been through this before this is a field type of text right it's not a number we're just limiting again the column to only accept text. And then percent alcohol, that's going to be a number. We can display it to the user as a percent, but given our options, we have to just work with our options here. The close, it's gonna be a number and we can append like a percent sign to it. Um, cool. The next we're gonna look at is drink price. Again, this is also a number. Anything that involves numbers like percentages, dollars currency will always just be a number and then and when you display it to the user you're going to show them a percent but from our perspective it's actually similar to excel um, where in order to be able to do calculation you just append a percent to a number um, cool and then lastly description is obviously text and the last one is available on tap. Do we have this on tap? And that is going to be a yes, no. Yes, no is actually the lightest thing to store. So, you know, when you're storing a record or something in a database, it's really light to store a yes, no. Available on tap. And let's go down to yes, no. That's what we're storing. It's a type yes, no, it's not text. We shouldn't be adding anything else here not a date, not a file, obviously. It's just simple what it's called a Boolean in programming terms, but I just call it yes, no. Awesome. So now we have all our field types correct. We have our applicants with the dates, with the address, image, and we'll see later on why this is important in Bubble and why it differentiates. It's just one of the small differentiators between Excel slash Google Sheets and Bubble that makes Bubble kind of unique and helps you turn this database into an actual user-facing app. And this is just one of the ways that keeps the data organized in Bubble and helps you actually manipulate it and show users different data. In Excel, everything you see is a database, right? If I change this, nobody else is gonna see this differently than me. There's no different kind of views. In Bubble, the user doesn't see a database, they see an app. And so you can manipulate the data and show it to users differently than how it exactly is in the database. And just a good example of it is when you're showing for a beer, the price, you're gonna not just show like one or five, you're gonna show five with a dollar sign in front of it. So that's just one example. So thank you for watching.